Hey, I'm Decathlon Gamer, and welcome back to FM23. This is Newton Heath. It's episode number two. Take a quick second, if you don't mind, drop down below, click that like button, hit subscribe, leave that algorithm comment. It really helps out, especially in the first three episodes. That's where the algorithm kind of really sets up a series uh, or not after that. It's straight down to viewership and, and whether you want to keep coming back and, and seeing what's going on within the series. Within the series, I've pushed forward about a week. We've had two more matches. I'll go over what happened with those preseason matches. Normally, not something that's going to matter, but this year in particular, I think it matters a little bit at least. Uh, we are up to 10 players officially on the roster. We still have a lot of players on trial at the... And, you know, the first thing that jumps out at you is five stars, five stars, five stars, five stars, bam, all the way through. Okay, well, we have a reputation of one. The league reputation has got to be helping us with this recruitment phase because the team just doesn't have it. And, and so five stars does not actually mean that these are good players take for example Wes Garfield you know what actually why don't we go with our top goalkeeper Sam Guthrie Sam Guthrie in my opinion is our best goalkeeper because he is the most well-rounded goalkeeper that we have reflexes he's a little bit below the other two we have three goalkeepers now uh, but mentally he's a little stronger and like I said, he's well-rounded. He doesn't have weaknesses in his game, but he's not great. Uh, I think the reason why he's a little more well-rounded is just simply that he's 26 and he's kind of picked some things up. He's supposed to be the backup, but I have a feeling he may work out as being our, our best goalkeeper. But let's compare him with Cameron Gregory. Now, Cameron Gregory, the reason why I bring him up, when you see what he is compared to Sam Guthrie, he's stronger in almost every way by a fairly wide margin. He's more physical. His shot stopping is quite a bit higher. His distribution, slightly better. His aerial ability is quite a bit better. His communication is better. We're equal in a few areas, but that's about it. We are not better than Cameron Gregory in any way. Now, let Let's say, okay, well, maybe Sam Guthrie just being well-rounded is part of it. Here's Wes Garfield compared to Cameron Gregory. Garfield's a better shot stopper, better aerially. He has more speed, but then he's worse in every other area compared to Guthrie. Again, when you look at Cameron Gregory, it looks a lot worse, the comparison head-to-head -head of these two. Now, who is... Cameron Gregory, you might ask. Well, he's not somebody available to me. He is the starting goalkeeper for Kettering Town. Our five-star rating, the ratings are relative player to player within your own organization. They are not relative to, say, the Premier League, and they're not relative to our own level, that sixth tier. They're just internally relative. So yes, the five-star players are better than what we had a month ago because we had no players. They might be better than our reputation because our reputation is one. But they are not better than the opposition. Cameron Gregory, Kettering Town. We are picked to finish 24th out of 24 teams. Kettering Town is picked to finish 23rd. This is the starting goalkeeper for the weakest team in the league besides ourselves. And he is significantly better than what I have. So we might be finding players and they might be coming in at five stars, but that does not make them talent. That just makes them better than nothing because that's the comparison right now. Eventually we're going to see those stars kind of realign and we'll, we'll see things filter out a little bit. But right now we don't really have a team yet with only 10 signed. So in comparison, everybody looks good. Well, not everybody. We found that there are some better than others, and we've been eliminating the others. We're slowly getting there on putting together a roster, but is Wes Garfield going to compete with Cameron Gregory to make stops? Not very well. So it's going to be tricky. Now, what has gone well for us is we actually did, against weaker opposition, have a successful run, 7-2. 
And not only did we have a 7-2 run, it was... It, it was one of those where we had 30 shot attempts and managed to get seven goals. You know, we had a decent amount on target, not the greatest percentage, but you're going to get that at lower levels. And Gallimore, Gallimore seems to be legit competitive, at least. I think he will be able to bag some goals for us. He's most likely our, at least right now, uh, mo most likely our starting forward Mike Roberts Aaron Austin scored for the opposition now those two guys those were the only two shots on target they had they had four attempts two on target they just happened to score both goals again that pointing out to the weaknesses of my defense Garfield played a half gave up a goal and Guthrie played the other half gave up a goal they both had 6.8 ratings they both only faced one shot on target, and neither one made a stop. But of the players that are here on loan right now, uh, we're starting to get there when it comes to the knowledge. I mean, it's it's definitely well under half, maybe a third of the players that are here, uh, that we still have attribute masking on and are still learning about them and, and trying to decide. And more and more, it's getting away from those first few positions that we had. So... I'm getting closer to making those decisions, hence, you know, we've signed 10 guys so far. Nathan Smith was the first goalkeeper that we picked up, and he's supposed to be the starter, but he, he just really is not on the same level of the others. Guthrie, the more well-rounded one, you can see here when compared to Smith. Smith, equal aerially, a little bit faster, slightly stronger mentally, uh, but that's, that's it, so he's... He is going to be kind of downgraded from the starter role to being let go. He's going to be mad because he was supposed to be a star player, uh, as he was literally the first signing that we had. Uh, the other nine have all been better, essentially, than what he was. Uh, and I knew that that was essentially going to happen. He's probably going to be parting ways, I would imagine, before too long. But that's where we're at on goalkeepers. We have three of them. I still have not signed a left back, but... That was the third position that we picked up on, and I now know enough on four out of five, and we're getting there on that fifth. Uh, we're a day or two away from finally making the call and you know, trying to sign the two guys or three guys in, so very nearly there. On the right side of D, same situation, except I think we are ready to make the call. I'm going to be making that call here briefly as I finally, following that game, have full knowledge. There were still three guys entering that match uh, yesterday, or actually earlier today, three guys that we still didn't have knowledge on, but after watching them play, uh, we finally have it all figured out. So uh, I'll be sitting down, comparing these five, and picking probably three, maybe just two, depends on kind of where they're at quality-wise, and making that decision, getting them signed on, eliminating the others, which will get us kind of in the, into those final positions uh, that we need to figure out. At center back, there's still a collection of players here, but for one thing, we already have three signed on that play multiple positions, center back and defensive mid. Defensive mid was a little harder to find. There's not as many in the pool that are interested in playing that position, so these guys could very well serve as defensive mids and then, you know, still have a pick of center backs from here but as center back was the fourth position we got into uh, you can see we only have knowledge on half but the others were getting closer on and I'm, i've been trying to make sure that they play uh, to help us out with that process defensive mids you can see that we have four signed out of five and with two on the the field at any time that's you know that's an important thing and that's the same three guys we were just looking at plus one more in jack holmes uh, Sonny Dean, the only other one I'm still taking a look at to see whether we want to bring him in or not. I have not gotten, gotten into our central attacking mid spot yet, so we still need to bring that in. We did just bring in some right attacking mids uh, over the last few days. and uh, Right now we have one side, however, he is our left, uh, left side starter, so he, he's a good one, Millen Brown. Looks pretty solid. Great crossing. Good first touch. Kind of balanced in a few areas. Good pace. Determined leadership. 
not outstanding, but a decent, you know, first option to be brought in. And then we'll we'll give some time to these five to uh, get through that attribute masking a bit to see where we're at for them. Millen Brown's all we have on the left side, though. So we, you know, we still need to go after those two positions and then ultimately the strikers. Now, as for those forwards, I have already signed Gallimore uh, as his name kind of just popped up as an option earlier on. I do have a couple of those right wingers who can play on top as well. But that's it for now. So we do need three more positions just to even start the process. However, from where we were when I talked about it last, about how I was worried, how long it was going to take, we're down to three positions left to go. We've only proceeded a week. We still have roughly three weeks till the start of the season. So it does look like we could and should successfully get through this process and have a team of you know 22 to 30 players uh, with at least two at every position by the start of the season and throughout the season as long as we have a transfer window and can sign players we're going to keep looking reason why is the moment we go out and start playing i think even if we're losing we're going to gain reputation because we're going to be playing at a level competitively win or lose that is a much higher level than a level one reputation team would be at so you would think that it's going to inch its way up now, performance better performance is going to make it go a lot better so if we can grab a couple wins in the first five or six matches i could see us actually having a little bit of a reputation even if it's a 25 30 kind of thing it may start opening the window to better players becoming available and ultimately that's how we're gonna to have to survive here's the hard thing about the level we're at the pyramid we're at the point where the pyramid's getting wider. There's more tiers underneath, which means there's more teams being relegated than there are teams being promoted. So the direction upward has fewer teams. Direction downward, there's two and two going into lower divisions. There's four teams that are going to get relegated, which means we have to finish 20th or better to survive. We have to beat four other teams, not just one or two. Easier said than done with the kind of roster we're going to be looking at. At least we'll have a roster, and hopefully the tactics can give us enough support. How far off this roster is competitively, though, eh, could make things difficult. But I like Gallimore. I, I've liked what I've seen from Gallimore playing. He's got a good first touch. He's got finishing. He can dribble. And see, there are some low attributes here. I mean, there's a reason why he's at our level, okay? But he's aggressive. He's composed. He makes okay decisions and has determination. Off the ball, this is important, off the ball is good. His pace is enough. He's agile enough. And when you throw in that little bit of the technique and, you know, it's 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 like just enough now heading leaves a lot to desire to be desired especially when you throw in a jumping reach of three so okay fine he's not going to score headers ultimately he is a poacher he's not a complete forward and we want a complete forward we're not going to really get one he's going to have a hard time playing that role but it's a step in the right direction i mean he's got the right combination of a few attributes where he's not good overall but he's got just the right blend that i think he's somebody who can score some goals for us and that's going to be important because i don't think we're going to get a, a whole lot of strong firm possession there's going to be have and it's going to come down to gallimore you know ball over the top and and beat a slower center back and at our level, you know, you're going to have a real mix of guys that can defend but run super slow. Guys that can clear a ball away with their head but not their foot. Right? You get a lot more hit and miss on players. So Gallimore being a little bit speedy and very capable of finishing and being in the right place right time and going after it could lead to a decent 
goal tally for him, which is going to be important, you know, if we're going to pick up some points. Certainly not the start of the series that I was hoping for if Ratcliffe is already looking to step aside when he's literally been on the job for less than a month. Uh, that could change things drastically. It should not, however, impact the stadium situation. So I think we will be just fine. Hopefully. Meanwhile, I've made my decisions on both fullback positions. So I have three right backs, three left backs, and three goalkeepers uh, already. I can whittle things down later on. I, I don't mind if this ends up pushing us to, say, 33 players if we have three at every position. It's really easy to give guys a, a few appearances and go, oh, yeah, you're not good enough. You're, you're not hanging in there at this level something about your combination of attributes is not quite working and and just get rid of them especially if they're unhappy and especially if you already have two more you know replacements in place uh, so fairly easy thing to do when you're not having to pay uh, I, like i said there's a lot of things working against us here but early on that is one thing that is absolutely working in our favor uh, it's a lot easier to deal with managing a club of unpaid amateurs which just has its own list of complications that you'd rather be professional or semi-professional but you know there is a trade-off it's not all bad uh, but anyway that's our three goalkeepers there's our three right backs uh blakely just signed now mellers barrett should be signing the next day or, or two and then uh Ajibode, not quite as skilled as a couple guys we let go but he is a lot faster so we're hoping that he can play a specific role against certain teams where his speed may be an advantage especially coming off the bench and then Drinkle and Humphreys are definitely more well-rounded and balanced and probably will get the majority of the time and Ashabodi will be you know special circumstances type player but that's nine sorted plus a few other guys signed uh, you know we may already be considering letting go somebody like Kyle Sharp who's a center mid I have three center mids and they're all good right now but they don't fit the formation and they're not guys you build around even if it says they're five stars they are not special compared to the other players on this roster so i i may just be letting them all go however at the moment without having gotten into this central attacking mid spot pots is filling in there fairly nicely uh, you can see role wise that these guys are well rounded based on you know what their best role might be the inevitable has finally happened we finally signed enough players or enough time has passed enough viewership of the squad has passed whatever combination it is that the uh, it's general manager in our case his concept his idea of where the players are in relation to one another has finally evolved it's not a bunch of five-star players looky looky what we have here we suddenly have a range of ability that is now reflecting the roster around us the players didn't magically change overnight our view of them did so that is why i was saying not long ago to to not trust those five-star ratings uh, oliver kemp among the best that we have right now Jamie Potts apparently is supposed to be among the best we have. And like I said, he's been playing in a position that does make him useful. Maybe he's somebody we're going to want to hang on to. But Barrett and Drinkle, we, we have bids in for them. William Tams just came in uh, as a potential. He's good for heading, marking, tackling. Overall balanced, it's a 10 average between those three areas. Uh, jumping reach is not great, so it kind of balances with the heading as being eh, okay pace is okay he makes good decisions uh, but his bravery is not high and yeah i don't think that's actually very good for a center back but there's a lot of the guys we've signed so they are towards the upper end and there is that kyle sharp a bit further th further down the list uh glaives was also one of the early ones that we signed garfield turns out he's not very good nathan smith turns out he's not very good and that's uh, one of those key reasons why Nathan Smith may not stick around. We may find another goalkeeper who uh, comes in as a bit better off. But new evaluations, new period for us. 
Has the club reputation grown? Let me find out. It has not. Our morale has improved, though. Uh, it started as a 10. It was balanced it's out of 20. It had dropped to, I believe, a 7. Now it's up to a 13. So a lot of the players are decently happy right now. But the reputation is still one. I think it's going to take competitive fixtures uh, to start altering that. The penultimate, second to last uh, preseason match is about to get underway. And I'm getting closer to at least an idea of something that resembles a first 11, including some new faces that seem to be eclipsing the guys we had previously. Now that we have a ceiling somewhere, all of a sudden we're inching our way above that ceiling. And I think that's going to happen kind of throughout the year. My starting 11 could change on a fairly rapid basis as we manage to squeeze out a little reputation here and there. Of course, the tricky thing is the players have to learn the system as you bring them in. So getting somebody, you know, it's much better than somebody else while they also have to learn the system is going to be tricky. There's, there's so much, so much at play, so many cogs in the wheels for this one. Uh, but let's see how this group does here and we'll, we'll just watch the first half with with kind of some sort of idea of a first 11 uh, all of them either have a bid in or are already in place and there are some other options like glaives mellers uh, that have already been brought in uh, doby as a, a new guy that i want to try out sigsworth looks okay tetlow looks decent uh, i definitely want to give tetlow a look uh, and then Jamie Potts looks great. And Jim Comini looked great. But they're center mids. Uh, anyway, we are getting closer and closer. There's actually a couple names here that I just released. I just released a few players, uh, including Skyler. The, like the first outfield player that we signed is gone. The first goalkeeper that we signed is now gone. That's how quick we kind of eclipsed that group as we've gotten started here with this this like really the the entirety barrett come on dude did he get a yellow for that no kemp has a yellow did kemp argue i mean barrett was the one who clearly committed the foul on that one that was strange that was really strange uh, i'm wondering if he argued anyway what was I saying? Oh, right. Uh, including the first performance, which obviously was a draw. Uh, every time since then, we've been playing against opposition that really is not quite, you know, at, at the level that we play at. They're, they're lower tier opposition. So, even though we're not really up to par for sixth tier competition right now, we're still putting together a squad that's probably good enough for seventh tier i mean you know it's pretty easy to recruit players that are just a little bit below the level it's getting more players that are at level that's you know the harder thing to do so we have fared well in our recent games and you know nice play there and lomas oh keeper makes a good stop really tight angle lomas goes for the the roof of the net and that would have hit if keeper didn't save that. That was a pretty decent save. Uh, Midgley with that crossing, and now it's cleared away. Uh, Midgley is going to be big time player. I think he's going to be one of the ones that sticks around longer. Uh, Lomas, who we just brought brought in, looks like he's a pretty good player. Uh, Gallimore does not really fit the complete forward role either. We're going to have to switch his role so he performs a little better, or use that complete forward role just to try to eke something out uh, play style wise all right we'll play a little longer here especially as fast as that uh, first half just went by Lomas loses the ball on that occasion I am starting to see some things I like about this team but then the moment we actually start the lead campaign I have a feeling it's it's gonna go very differently at that stage uh, it's different opposition 
very very different opposition it makes a huge huge difference you know you see you see it all the time Premier League right you see guys that perform really well Gallimore see what I'm talking about that's a nice goal right there nice turn blasted into the upper corner nice play for Campbell simple way off but Gallimore nice turn second touch on that one gets it under control and just kind of drags around on it not very good defense, so uh, let's be let's be honest on that. Defense could have, should have done better on that occasion. Tams, nice recovery. New face, just signed his contract about yesterday. Oh, he got it in, Gallimore. Chips the keeper essentially there, with the keeper basically on the line. Plays it up and over the crossbar, and then it dips just below. I mean, that is inch perfect chip shot, curling away from the keeper. Keeper, but again with the a better keeper is going to save that and tip that up over the bar. But hey, I'll take it. No complaints for me here. And Lomas makes it three. Bradbury was definitely in position for the uh, overlap there. Doby, nice turn inside, brought down in the box. It's going to be a second yellow, too. This guy's going to get sent off for sure. Oh, he doesn't. Wow. Yes. Straight penalty. Tetlow steps up to take it. Of course, I have not, as I'm still... Very much working on building the roster here at this point. I have not assigned any players to corners, free kicks, any of those assignments. I, I don't know if it's just me, but the crowd is sounding very, very loud, even though I have to turn down quite a bit. Hopefully, I'll, I'll check in uh, my post-edit if that's going to need adjustment. But as we go forward with this series, that should be a corner kick, Sigsworth. Yeah, that was blocked. Can't get on the end of that one, but I'm liking what I'm seeing from the team. Just with the only exception being that whole, that caveat of the level of opposition. Come on. Oh, pots. I, I'm seeing some simple mistakes that these guys make in, in terms of the decisions, the decision making. But there's something here. There's something here. And, and I think this is a team that will be capable of getting some points. But there's no way that they are dominating. So La Conde is that uh, shot was blocked. Came off that first defender. Uh, that's going to get there. Potts sets up Sigsworth in box. Oh, he had the pullback, but he pulls it back himself. Gives it away. Mr. I should have been sent off for that... Uh, Penalty. Should have been an automatic yell. Beautiful through ball. Bradbury ends up taking it himself. Defense was playing the angles well. Give him credit on that one. They they definitely played the angles well there. Sixworth looks awfully tired for somebody who's subbed on in the second half. Final seconds here. Clearance should do it, and it does. Final, 4-0. Preseason continues to go strongly after that first game. They had one shot on target all game. 0.07 XG. Solid, solid team performance there. Just about ready to wrap up our preseason and get the year underway. I'm going to continue just plugging away, looking for any additional players. And I've already, I've already given free transfers to about six guys. I have one or two of the original signings, that first group of about seven, where all of them wanted to be a star because they were the star of the team that didn't exist. After that, I was able to start getting guys brought in as you know fringe players, squad players, first team players. Uh, but outside of one or two recent and much better signings, I've been able to avoid star. And so as soon as guys are recognizing that there's players showing up that are better than them, and they were supposed to be a star, they instantly go, 
uh oh. So there's been a few players that have already either parted ways through the free transfer after grumbling or they're grumbling and already getting offers from other teams, teams that are not in our tier, of course, tiers below us. Uh, it does happen. It does happen, but it's only when there's unrest that they come along. They, they don't come along otherwise. But in the meantime, yes, takeover rumors persist. Uh, we could have new ownership here fairly soon. Wouldn't that be something if they suddenly, you know, paid off, <laughs> paid off the team debt? Lomas has now signed. He is the best player right now on the squad, but Midgley also has now signed, and he likewise, and Midgley does have that star player. And as you look down, Millen Brown was the other one who was the best player for a while. All of these guys have come on since, and that's the thing. We are... We are building to a new level, to a new level, to a new level, to a new level. Every handful of players, we're, we, we're just opening it up on a regular basis. Now, it's been a couple more weeks. I don't see any reason why at this stage we would have a reputation, and we don't. It's still one. It, it's really just coming down to that simple fact that we are they see who's on the roster they think about who's on the roster before they agree to a trial before they agree to sign with us and as they see a more talented group of players the next group is more willing to step in and go hey i'm similar level to these guys and you're playing in the vanarama national league north sure and so it's just do, 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 do and we get better and better so keep going keep going as long as we can because right now the players aren't really good enough for the level we need to be at it's, it's a big trade-off i know the consistency part getting used to the system is going to have an impact it's going to be a big deal like it's it's a necessary element but where's that trade-off right when do we stop pushing when we stop plugging away and getting better players uh, well, i think when the players get good enough to you know maybe win if they're not good enough to win it doesn't matter if they're good enough for the system i suppose so there's the philosophy for now is keep getting better and better and better players and just shuffle constantly shuffle the deck until it's good enough then we can focus on long-term health and sustainability and players getting used to the system and you know fitting into the system so on and so forth okay well anyway there's the idea there's the concept there's where we're at and uh let's go ahead and call it an episode there i'm gonna finish out this last yeah, week and a half two weeks left of preseason we'll see what signings i can make going forward but ultimately it's about time, folks. We are about to see our first real test. Now, that first game looked kind of ugly, but part of that was just it was a whole team of defensive players playing all over the pitch. We shouldn't look that bad, but we're going to be facing opponents that are much better than what we've seen in preseason. So just how bad will we look? How competitive will we be? <laughs> we'll find out next time. That is going to do it for this episode. I'm Decathlon Gamer. Like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Have a good one. Be safe out there. Bye for now.